Well, X, I spent a lot of my childhood years here and reading the experiences. Since then, a lot of weird things happen in my life, and now, after I waited some time for things to cool off, I've decided to share them with you. I am no writer, but I will try my best. Not sure where to start, so I'll just write some background info. I come from a country in Europe, born into a pretty big Muslim family. People there have a lot of old traditions and no one knows the origins. When I was about two to three years old, my family moved from our village into a small city. Family isn't that religious. Only the old members, grandpa, grandma. Be me, around seven years old. Father worked abroad, so I was alone with my mother. One night, while laying in bed at night, I felt uneasy. I was afraid of the dark, but it wasn't that. I got so scared that I went into my mother's bed and covered myself with a blanket. At this point, I was terrified, sweating, and whimpering. Thought to myself I was being a pussy, so I tried to relax. At that moment, I felt a cold hand grabbing me by my calf. I actually pulled and the hand didn't let go for a couple of seconds. I was just lying down, silently crying, whimpering. Couldn't sleep at all. Next morning, I was trying to explain it to myself and failed. Never told it to anyone until my father told me the story about our house. I'm going to keep posting if anyone's willing to read. Fast forward about ten years. Family had a really rough time since we moved into the new house. No money, bad shit always happening, etc. Got to the point where we had to sell the house or be evicted. We got evicted since no one wanted the house. Went to work with my father on construction. One night we were talking and he said he blames the house for everything. He said he never wanted it, but my mother insisted. He says when we moved in, there was a lot of unexplained things. He found rotten walnuts in little bags inside the walls when we were renovating. Usually in our culture, when you want to curse someone, you put rotten food, old bones, and even poop somewhere close to that person. Example, under the doormat, in flower pots, anywhere where that someone will pass by every day. Left the thread to die since no one replied, but I'll continue now. Now, my father isn't one to believe in these kinds of things. Always try to explain everything logically. But, that changed when his brother told him that it might be jinns that are to blame for the shit luck. He told him that he knows a woman that can help him if that's the case. So, I was about 10 to 11, and I remember that night they sent me to my room and told me not to get out. I heard a man and a woman coming into the house, and they went into the living room. So the rest of the story is from my father. They came and right away told them they sent some evil shit in the house. It's an understatement to say my father was skeptical. They went into the living room, they talked a bit, and told them they'll try to fix it. How? Well, they were going to exercise my parents. They put on this surah, the verse from the Quran, that is used in these kinds of situations, and put headphones on my mother first. As soon as she heard it, she started screaming. I remember hearing it in my room. The screams. She fell down on the floor and looked like she was having a seizure. In this moment, little me went and opened the door slightly to see what the fuck was going on. My face went mother with headphones on, having a seizure whilst the man is holding her down and a woman doing some strange shit with hands. Started crying and went back into my room. Father told me she's actually using the hands to guide the spirits away from my mother. He actually saw something like a small bubble under her skin on her arm. The woman guided it to her ring finger and cut out a small hole for the spirit to get out. All this shit sounds crazy. Even to this day, I try to ignore everything that went on. When they finished, my mother was so exhausted she went right to sleep. Father stood there confused, not sure of what just happened. Woman told him my mother has at least two gins in her, and it was probably from the house. Well, after that night, my parents were so scared of what they saw that they decided to ignore it. So everything went on normally. My family had a hard time in everything. Fast forward a couple of years. You don't even understand how shitty it was. Everything that could go wrong did every time. We were always fighting between each other. After a while, my mother started having these frantic panic attacks. When I was 13, I just didn't want to be in the house, so I spent all day, every day, outside, just to get out of the negativity. 
used the house only for sleeping. That went on until I was 18. And as soon as I finished school, we lost the house. Moved and that's that. We still fight each other and mom still has those panic attacks. Father told me about all this and told me directly that he doesn't know how to fight it. And oh yeah, that night, when I felt that arm grabbing me, my father told me it was actually a djinn's hand. The djinn got so close to me that it could physically touch me, which is as much as they can do physically. If I remember some stuff from my childhood, I'll write it down, but now I'll write a story my friend told me that's a bit connected. So this story was more interesting since my friend's family decided to fight these spirits. I was about 17 when my friend told me this. Knew him since I was six, never lied to me. We never spoke about these kinds of stuff before that. If someone else told me the same story, I would call him a liar. But not this guy. His family is very religious. And one day we went out for a coffee. We were sitting and it was unusually silent. Asked him what's up and why he's not talking. Told me he has something to tell me. Asks me not to tell anyone ever. Sorry bro. His grandfather had died a couple days before that. I'll keep this as short as possible. Grandpa died, and after the funeral, they went into his house. His house is kind of old, and in the outskirts of a village. His family, like I said, was very religious. His aunt was living with his grandpa, and she told them how weird it was the last couple of months, always alone in his house. From time to time, she could hear him speak Arabic in his room. Then she told him about an unmarked graveyard in their garden. Really old, like a couple hundred years old. She said one day, about half a year ago, he was digging in the garden and found it. There were more than two skeletons there. He didn't want to dig further, so he just covered the hole and continued like nothing had happened. Fast forward a month, and he started acting weird. Stopped the garden work, spent his days reading the Quran and praying. The aunt asked him what was going on. He told her they were being attacked. Attacked by those people in the graveyard. He said they speak to him, and they want him to mark the graves and have a funeral so they can rest. Aunt got scared for him. Asked him to see a doctor, but he refused, stating that he has to fight them back. Said he worked hard and ain't giving no one his land. Aunt left him be, and, well, a couple of months later, he died. She didn't connect the dots, but my friend's family will. So, when she told them that, they searched around the house and found his Quran with his journal. In the journal, just some wild shit like, name spoke to me, he listened to me, etc, etc. There are at least 50 names there, and he was keeping tabs on them, writing down everything they told him. They found a journal note that said, name told me they were soldiers, they had a cruel death. Name told me they want a proper funeral. They were weirded out by this. Thought Grandpa went crazy in his last months. Went back home and fast forward a couple of days, they had a call from the aunt. She told them weird shit is going on around the house. She hears footsteps all day and all night. Breathing. Even things falling over. Real spoopy stuff. Well, they pretty much told her she was imagining things. A week later, she calls him crying she got locked out of the house and that she's scared shitless, pretty much. What? They tell her to come sleep in their house, about an hour drive from the village the house was in. She comes and again tells them about the weird stuff. She says she's not imagining things and that she thinks they should have a proper burial. Well, my friend's father told her that she has to check the local priest, Imam. He goes to see him and the priest tells him that it's probably jinns. But the thing is, there are good and bad jinns. Priest tells him about how one can, if willing, gather these good jinns, even make an army. After that, he went back and told everything to his family. They talked and after a while they concluded that grandpa did some shit he shouldn't have. Dude made a small army of jinns to endlessly fight the spirits from the graveyard. That's what the journal was for. He kept tabs on his army. Tomorrow they went to the house, marked the graveyard, and gave a proper funeral to those soldiers. Things calmed down for a while in their house, but in their lives things were getting weird. Like my family, 
They found rotten walnuts and just weird stuff packed nicely around the house. They decided to buy a couple of cameras and put them around. They bought infrared cameras. I forgot to say, my friend's family is pretty big. He has three brothers, two of them abroad, and one living with the family. Fast forward a couple of days. They were watching the camera footage. Fast forward a lot, just to see if anyone was in their yard. They saw an old woman, hunched, coming in at around 2 to 3 a.m. and going back into their shed. She took a shit in their shed. What the fuck? Tomorrow, my friend went out to his car to find the woman, searched a couple of hours with no luck. He went back and, well, tried to forget all about it, like all of us do when weird shit happens. So for grammatical errors, writing fast because I have to go soon. They watched that camera footage every night, and every night they saw something weird. Around 2 to 3 a.m., every night, the same car drives by their house. Not once, but like, five to six times. Every ten minutes for an hour, just back and forth. And when this car passes, some weird orb-like stuff on the infrared camera goes from the car to the house and stays by the front door. When someone opens the door, they come in. My friend's father was sure that they were jinns, and someone is sending them to his family. So the next day, they waited in their yard. Friend's brother even had a gun just in case. At around 2am, they saw the car. The driver must have seen them since they turned around and didn't come back. Next night, same thing. So my friend decides to search for the woman that took a shit. After a couple of hours, he sees her. He described her as really scary looking. He described her as really scary looking, like she was 150 years old. Hunched back, like 150 centimeters tall, no more. And he attacked her on the street whilst people passed by. What the fuck did you do? Who sent you? What are you doing? Etc, etc. She actually laughed and told him something in fucking Arabic. Friend went ape and grabbed her and screamed in her face. She said, I'm just doing what I'm told. What? He leaves her and goes back to his family. Tells them what happened and they conclude that there are more people doing things, at least two. Well, I talked to you about my family's shit luck. Same thing goes for his family. One brother remarried three times. No children. One brother never got married. Is in serious debt from failed business. Those two lived abroad. Well, when they found out someone's been sending jinns and cursing them, they called the two brothers back home. So together, they might figure out who's doing their shit. They went together to the priest, and the priest told them pretty much that the curses work like this. If you want something so bad, you live for it, and you get it. The curse just makes you kind of sabotage yourself. Like the brother that was remarried, he always dreamed of having a big family. But once he got a wife, he couldn't have a son. And then after a while, he got sick, slash jealous. And with every wife, they leave him because of his jealousy. Other brother wanted to have a big business, be the boss and be rich. He did everything by the rules. The business was looking good, but then he started gambling, and the business failed because of it. Priest said it's because of the curses. Someone is actively doing it for a long time. They go back to their house and decide to tear down every wall in the house and look for that weird stuff they found in the house. They found so many things inside. They filled a whole bag with them. Things inside the bricks, like rotten walnuts, hair, and then bottle caps and small pieces of paper with some verse from the Quran written in Arabic. Well, they destroyed the entire inside of the house and took out the most weird stuff. Then they decided to contact these spirits. They put on the same surah my mother was listening to, and they started reciting the Quran. They put it on the speakers so every family member could hear it. Right away, my brother that's in debt fell on the floor and started screaming and shit. The more they recited, the louder the screams got, and then the really freaky shit started happening. His screams changed. Friend told me it was like a megaphone, just fucking loud as fuck and unearthly, like those scenes from The Exorcist. I laughed when he said it, being non-religious and all, but the dude looked me straight in the eyes. He said, don't laugh, that's my brother. 
he wouldn't fake it. I went silent, then he continued. His brother got up and started speaking to them, but not with his voice, and not in his language. Dude was speaking Arabic like it was his mother tongue, but he only knew the basics. Friend's father knew Arabic since they went to school there and started speaking to him. Everyone knows the spirits always tell you what you want to hear. Told him they were a great family, that God watches them, that he's proud of them. Told them even that God sent a message for them, but they need to turn off the Sora so they can say it. My friend's father knew better. He believed that the jinn, entity, is lying just so they can turn the Sora off. So he started reciting the Quran again. So after a while of screaming, the brother went into a seizure-like state. They held him down and continued reciting in his ear. Then he just stood still. Everyone left the room. Only my friend's father stayed, reciting the whole night. I know the story is wild, but believe me when I say it all happened. The next day, they went to the priest again and told him what had happened. He said they did right, and that the dude that was possessed should come to live with him for a while in the mosque. So he did. He didn't remember anything of what had happened, and says the last thing he remembers is the first verse of the surah. They go back, thinking about what they should do next. How do you fight it if you don't know who's cursing them? My friend's father decides to go to visit his brother. He lives alone in the same village the grandfather did, so he drives about an hour to speak with him. He told him everything, and he says he knows how to handle this. He'll contact some priest he met a while ago, and he'll come to fix it. He comes back and waits. Meanwhile, every night the car was passing by when they were not waiting for him. One night my friend decides to hide in the bushes, not telling anyone. He sees the car passing and sees the license plates. Now they only have to find the car. The next day they went out to search with no luck. After a couple of days of searching, they give up. How are they supposed to find one car in a city of 50k people? They decide to guard the house every night so the dude sees them and turns back. My friend and his two brothers did it, but the car stopped coming after the night he saw the license plates. I'll cut this short since I don't have time. They went to the priest the uncle told them about, which was about a three hours drive. He tells them that they are exaggerating. He said, it isn't so bad. Whoever is doing this must have quit since he's not coming anymore. They agree and continue with life. Brother that was living with the other priest goes back to his house abroad, as well as the other brother. Things start to go back to normal. They renovated the house, and it was all cool. After about three months, his family goes to visit the uncle. My friend went with them. As soon as they come into the yard, he recognizes the car. It's that car that drives up and down every night. The license plates match. It was their uncle. After they leave, he tells his dad about the car. His father didn't notice it, didn't even care to look back. Ask his brother what the fuck he was doing. He's faking confusion like he has no idea what he's talking about. Friend's dad attacks him, punches him, and starts screaming, What did you do? He says he'll explain everything. Tells him how he and dad, friend's grandpa, were controlling these jinns together. They gathered them to protect the land and fight off those soldiers. When grandpa died, his jinns didn't know where to go, so they started attacking him. He tried to fight them off, but couldn't, since Grandpa had too many, around 50. So he got ill, stopped eating, and started losing weight. Then he decided he has to send them away, and decides to send them to his brother since it's easier if you know someone. He said every night he did it for about a month. My friend's dad asks him about the weird woman and the weird shit they found in the walls. He tells them that he has nothing to do with it. He says he'll find out who it is and curse them so their jinns attack them. Friend's dad told him to never speak with them again, and left. Fast forward about a month, living normally. Friend's dad receives a letter from his brother. In the letter, he said he did curse those people, and the jinns attacked them. They died. Two people my friend's dad knew, only like acquaintances, never did anything to them that he knows of. They died two days apart. What the fuck? So, I have no idea why they were targeted by them. Neither do they know if it was really finished. My friend called me like a month ago. I live abroad now. 
and told me some new crazy shit is happening and he'll tell me all about it when I come. I'm skeptical about it all, but when I think about who told me this story, I have to believe it. Even though I don't want to. <laughs>